Happy Friday, everyone. Um, all those who can't hear my voice, 10.30 is kick off. I don't switch my mic on, otherwise you'll hear me banging and crashing in the background. Um, I hope you can hear me all over. Okay. Good morning, K-Man, and uh, good morning to our special guest today, uh, Leandro. I uh, hope you both doing well. Um, right, so not a lot going on this morning, so we'll just run through some of the bits and pieces uh, like we usually do the data. Um, any comments and bits and bobs that have come out overnight. Uh, just a quick look back at yesterday's US GDP, slightly lower um, reading there uh, on the uh, revision, came in at minus 1.5 from the prior 1.4. Um, overall, this is still backward looking data. You know, we're, we're way past that now. We're well into uh, Q2. Um, there were a couple of highlights in, in the, some of the other numbers that we get along with it. Spending, uh, consumer spending, um, was showing a pretty decent up at 3.1%, so a bit of a rise over last time. Um, investments, that was looking good as well. That was up 9.2%. So even though it doesn't look on the whole that Q1 in, in the US was, was that great, uh, there are some aspects to it that, that were holding up um, in key components like investment and consumer spending. Um, but as I say, we need to see what the, the next couple of months brings. And, and so far, we've we've not seen too much uh, good data coming through from some of the sectors. <clears throat> One of those sectors is the housing numbers. And we got pending home sales yesterday. That was another miss and a drop over last month, minus 3.9% uh, versus 2%, uh, minus 2% expected. Um, that makes it four for four for the main housing numbers in April, all coming in lower, um, some by a, a good chunk. Um, like uh, existing sales, uh, pending sales as well, down a chunk as well. So we're seeing the weakness pretty much for that month, uh, for April confirmed there in the housing numbers. Um, Canada, we have retail sales out, holding up fairly well. Um, the all sales was, was pretty flat, but if you take out the uh, autos and some of the other components, that was up 2.4%. So, you know, nothing to worry about there as far as the uh, consumer goes, although it is March data, so it's well behind everyone else. Um, so we need to play a bit of catch up there. Over to another one of the smaller regional manufacturing indexes, uh, the KC Fed manufacturing came in at 19 versus 28 uh, prior. So again, we're seeing the trend in manufacturing data so far this month coming in lower. We had that from the Empire, the Philly Fed, uh, the Richmond Fed, uh, the market. So we're seeing signs there, again, potentially of another sector that's maybe on its way down rather than going up. Um, something to keep an eye on as we move in across the weeks ahead. Um, just quickly going to have a look at uh, Tokyo, Japan, Tokyo CPI. Nothing really of note in there, numbers round about what was expected or the, the prior readings. Um, what we can infer from that is that inflation at least isn't going down yet. Um, it's staying up around that 2% uh, mark uh, for some of the core numbers. Um, we had Kuroda in Parliament again today talking with the PM. Nothing really of note, no additional comments on top of what he said about uh, the debate about exiting that we got yesterday that uh, caused a bit of a, a pop in the dollar yen. Um, so no, he didn't really emphasize or, or speak much about that. He expects CPI to remain around 2% for, for about the next 12 months. Um, but what he's wanting to see uh, things coming in that will sustain inflation is uh, one of the things he wants to see is, is wages rising. Um, so that gives us a Gives us a little checkbox to, to look at for the on the wages side to see if wages start building, that's going to play into the, the Bank of Japan's uh, plans. Um, PM Kishida was, was blaming energy costs and material costs for the reasons behind inflation. Um, so they're still trying to keep it in the, the, the temporary box, if you like, that uh, if, if these prices come out, fairly quickly, then they're going to see inflation drop. They don't believe inflation is really sustainable. Um, but as we know from looking at all the other countries at the moment, how long is a piece of string? We've seen inflation up and it remains high. Uh, it's not looking like it's dropping anytime soon. So while they still may see it's it's transitory in Japan, it's how long that transitory runs on for. 
Yeah. Um, um, over to the UK. Yeah, go on, mate. You were mentioning about the wages in Japan. Um, one has to know that it is a very lengthy and slow process to raise uh, uh, ra uh, wages in Japan because there's a lot of negotiations going on between uh, the government and uh, and the main Japanese uh, companies. It's a it's a very hard process and 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 usually they do raise in the end but uh is it higher than the than the cpi it's very very doubtful it, it's a it's a very slow process over there just because the japanese tradition of uh once you work for a company you you virtually have a uh, work for life which is slowly changing but uh, uh at the same time companies uh, are um, uh, raising w wages uh, really, really slowly, just uh, as a, in, in, in case you didn't know. <laughs> yep, cool. Thanks, Kay. Um, and that's actually something that, that is very prevalent in, in Europe as well, and particularly Germany. Germany have very strong unions, um, in this, particularly in their, their manufacturing sector, industry sector, and they're going to be really going at wage negotiations. I mean, they, they cover a hell of a lot of workers. Um, and so they're going to be looking for for wage negotiations well above inflation, probably, um, which is going to keep inflation rising because it's, it becomes just a, a snowball. You know, inflation rises. They want wages above inflation. That causes inflation to rise and they want wages above inflation. So Germany is one country. If you want to look at some uh, as a, a litmus test for how wages might be rising, then Germany is probably your clearest view because of those big unions um, looking after the wages and, and getting into those wage negotiations. Um, but anyway, just some of the other news, not a lot going on, as I say, not much from, from Europe. Uh, ECB's de cost was coming out with the same old lines earlier this morning about ending QE, um, then raising rates sometime after. No, no real difference to the the lines we've been hearing there, we know what the ECB are likely to be doing now. Um, yesterday, UK Sunak, he finally uh, flipped the switch and, and imposed a windfall tax on energy companies. Um, there was a little bit of negativity in the pound when that came out because, you know, markets, investors don't like taxes, first and foremost. Um, and when they're hitting the sector uh, of the economy, in this case, energy, uh, which makes up a big part of, of the stock markets, particularly in the UK, um, that wasn't seen in, a, in the best of lights. Um, no, it wasn't Morning, guys. So, Morning, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I, I wanted to ask a question. When, uh, when energy prices plummet, do they give money back to these companies? <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. a thing. Uh, right? No, that's a thing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's give with one hand, take with the other. Um, exactly. the, the, other, the other thing he did was he, back in April, he um, he gave out what, what are pretty much loans to people. So you could apply for a loan, uh, £200 or up to, up to a certain amount to get off your energy bill because of rising costs. But he was going to be taking that in a year's time, taking that back off you in installments in a year's time. He's increased that now. So the, the £200 that it was last month is now £400. Um, because there's going to be another crunch on prices in, into October. Um, but this time he's changed it that it's not going to be uh, a loan. It's going to be more of a grant, so you don't have to pay it back. And for the, the worse off, they're going to get up to, to £600, and for pensions, maybe up to £800. Um, now, because he's taken it away from being paid back, this is pretty much amounting to similar to the US stim checks, so it's going to be cash in the bank, um, which can potentially, if people don't use it for what it's supposed to be used for, i.e. Their, their bills, if they go and spend it up the wall, go shopping or whatever, go on holiday, which some people will tend to do, um, then that could see a little boost in economic activity, things like retail sales, um, so on and so forth. Um, but that's what he, he did there anyway. Um, back to the calendar for today. Um, PCE is going to be the, the big one on the marker here. Um, got a couple of speakers out. Bullard uh, will be coming out with his usual waffle. Um, ECB Lane uh, is going to speak a bit later as well. Just keep an eye on that one. He's the, the chief economist. So now that Lagarde's set her stall out, we're going to see whether he agrees with it, which he's likely to. Um, 
but just watch out for some comments there. He's he's one of the heavyweights uh, in terms of ECB speakers. Um, but yeah, the PCE is going to be the the number today. Are we going to see inflation keeping up, or are we going to see a pullback? Um, it's expected to to come in slightly lower, particularly on the core, uh, in at 4.9% versus the prior 5.2%. So keep an eye on there. We have seen inflation coming off a tiny bit, um, so we'll see whether that trend continues or whether it carries on. Um, also got the uh, Michigan later on today. Um, again, keep an eye on these inflation numbers. The 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 one year and the uh, longer term inflation numbers. This is something that the Fed will keep an eye on just to see what the consumer, what the everyday American is feeling about inflation. Uh, if they feel inflation is going to keep rising, uh, then these numbers are likely to, to go higher. That tells the Fed that they need to stay on their path. They need to get inflation under control because if people think that prices are going to go up, they tend to they can tend to do all their spending now and it means they don't do spending later because they buy now while it's cheaper than it's going to be in a month's time. Um, so that's how inflation sentiment feeds into to the Fed's thinking now. Um, so that's a, a quick uh, look at the, the news. I say not a lot out. Um, and what I'm going to do now is, is bring in uh, mi amigo from España, uh, Leandro. He's going to have a quick chat about uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I know that's something that, that he's all over usually in the, the Forex analytics rooms. Um, so good morning, Leandro. Um, I shall let you... Uh, let's have a look. I promoted them already. Ah, he's on Hello, everyone. Can you hear Hola. me? Hola. Hola, mate. Yeah, I think uh, share, stop sharing. Uh, da, 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 I da, think da, da. you have to stop of sharing. Yeah, that's all yours, mate. Okay. I will try to. Please let me let me know if you are watching my screen. Yep. Yeah. Can see you. you. Oh, and we got Great. you as well. Look at that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, uh, hello everyone. The first uh, thanks Ryan, Kemen, Stelios, gentlemen for having me on uh, here in your show. Uh, I will try to uh, speak slowly, you know, that no native here in English, so maybe some technical words or some expressions are not totally correct. But, uh, well, at the end, the most important thing about all my stuff around, uh, well, is that you all understand my point, my technical point of view of the chart Bitcoin, uh, we can see in this case. Um, today, I would like to, to start with this uh, crypto instrument, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I would like to start with my big picture first in weekly because, uh, well, with the big picture, uh, I have my projections. I mean, what I could expect uh, from Bitcoin in dollars here, in dollars, as you can see, in this case, uh, I see here in this area, here, that line was broken. I mean this line. This is one of my lines um, to to control uh, my risk. Uh, well, I have to say first that in my screen I have only two indicators. Uh, one is the market cycle indicator. That, that here you have it. The the exponential moving average, uh, the thirty four, as you can see here, highs, lows. The center is closed, the other is low. This is what I call market cycle uh, and well-defined uh, areas. Bulls area for me is above in every time frame. Now I am uh, in weekly. We are in weekly, so bears area uh, below, below and range inside. In the thing, range is inside. Uh, the second uh, indicator for me is uh, my momentum indicator that I use it only in the exact moment, for example, here, in the exact moment that the line uh, is broken to validate, let's say to validate the line. Um, it's an OSMA oscillator here, you, you can see with the parameters uh, of MetaTrader. Uh, in this case, as I said before, uh, the line was broken here in this area uh, with momentum. I say momentum. Have a look here. Uh, I like to to see the two indicators uh, watching at the same direction. I mean, when I am when the, this instrument 
in this case, Bitcoin is in the reverse area. I need uh, the, the, the line, the broken line with uh, below zero line, okay? With a momentum indicator below uh, zero line. I, I, I always I always need uh, first a line at uh, broken line selling area selling line in this case uh, in the bulls area bull buying line that should be a different case because uh, before a line is broken in this case in this uh, bears area it's support I mean this is line is support uh, so I need to, to the, the line and the area to be resistant. No? Uh, for that reason, I always wait for a broken line in order to my control risk. My, I need uh, all my selling orders in resistance areas and my buyer's orders in support areas. Uh, I always draw my FIBO levels as uh, 100% uh, with this tool of uh, Fibonacci. Uh, at the pivot point more close uh, here to the, the line, to the, the, the candle that broke the line 100 here. And the zero level in the point, uh, the more range in this case above the line, here we have the more range to the line. So the zero point is always here. Uh, my target uh, in this case, my, my first, FIBO extension here uh, you have uh, with this gap I uh, have a, a gap uh, in the Bitcoin and this is uh, my first target uh, 127.2 percent of uh, FIBO uh, and now depend of uh, your entry and your stop loss in validation point you know uh, between these two last levels uh, entry and stop loss I calculate my risk account as a percent always on my trading capital. I'll, I, I always say, please take care with the leverage. Uh, now uh, more than 1% for me uh, is, uh, is, in, is one percent is enough. If you make simple maths, you can see that it's not uh, sustainable at all. If you trade more than 1%, uh, I made uh, a complete webinar in FX Street uh, about uh, exactly these questions, but so sorry, but it was in Spanish. <laughs> I am going to change now my time frame to daily to look for uh, opportunities. Now I have the big picture uh, uh, in my head. Uh, have a look at this range, uh, the Bitcoin. Now we have. Uh, a number of days, uh, it's actually 15 bars. 15 bars uh, with today uh, in daily means 15 days. Uh, so um, as I said before, uh, I need uh, a resistance area uh, to try to sell. I am here, uh, um, this instrument is here in also in the bars area two below my market cycle with so the the opportunities i i have to look for is it's selling no uh, in order to look for my opportunities i i can change uh, my time frame again h4 uh, in this case now we are in intraday uh, i also can draw my fibos at uh, the same way uh, we, we have here this this line of everybody can see the range, the daily range, the daily range, support, support clearly, support, support, resistance, resistant, 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 resistance. Well, we are uh, for now in, in this range, but in the verse area. So uh, this pivot point with the immediately left below, here this one, I can draw my line and in case, just only in case that Bitcoin breaks my line, I can draw my FIBO like this way, 100% uh, again, here in the candle more close, the pivot point, uh, the, 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 close, the candle close to the, to the potential uh, line 
broken line here. Uh, the zero level, the more range to the to the to my line. Line starts here. That means all in my left or on my left is not valid uh, to control my risk. So my zero point is just there. My one hundred is here. So my risk is in control now. The the first thing I need is. Bitcoin breaks because, as I said before, I need a resistance now with support. And if Bitcoin retest, retest my what I call control area, that is exactly always the same area 78, 78, 88%. I will look now a zoom better 78 here, 88. Do you know if uh, Bitcoin? breaks now we can say now is resistance area now is resistance area support 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 if the price is below you know resistance so is the time to control my risk in the area in case i said bitcoin again retest the area in order to the first FIBO target in my um, my invalidation point my stop loss have a look always at the the other side of my market cycle, my first uh, FIBO, FIBO level, in this case, 50%. With this 50% in mind, every entry around 78, you can see my risk reward ratio should be 1.3 in 171. So this is... Uh, what I think about uh, Bitcoin in H4 are uh, the potential opportunity that we could uh, have you know, uh, in this uh, in this world, friends. That's all. I hope you you all enjoy the the weekend. Uh, it's a perfect time to take a rest now. So thank you very much, Ryan, Keman, Stelios, uh, for Cheers, having mate. me on. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, so what's what's your view on Bitcoin at the moment? You know, we've had a, a bit of a, a move down. Um, do you see it sustaining or, or we, we're going to be, or is this pattern you've got here, you know, 15 days of a bit of consolidation, um, you know, is, is that showing signs of a bottom now? Yeah, the, now we are in consolidation. And in order to, to take my entry, uh, I need this this line, this bro line to be broken. Is uh, And after that, uh, a retest, as I said before, to my area. So mm -hmm. in this area, uh, for me now, is resistant. Now, now it's support. Now it's support. But in the case that the line should be broken, uh, change support uh, to resistance. Yeah. So yeah, I, I will be uh, short in in this uh, uh, in this Bitcoin. Uh, you know, with a stop loss in the other side of the, my market cycle of exactly this uh, chart of the time frame. I always have to control my risk in the in the time frame that I see my opportunity. So uh, well, I can have a mistake for that reason. I control my risk. I have my stop loss. I have my entry order. I have my, my target. So I have my risk reward ratio. So me as a trader, the question is, do you accept it or do you do or not? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, understood, mate. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, thank you. Always a pleasure to see you and speak to you. Um, for those that don't I know. Stop to sharing now. Yeah, go ahead. Leandro is our resident musician, so he's always giving us songs up uh, on the, uh, in our yeah, internal I'm chat. Sorry. So I'll, I'll get him on, here, get him on here, singing a little now. tune next time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. Uh, it's okay now? Yeah, all good, mate, no, I okay. think. Perfect. Yeah, cool. If yeah, thank you very much again, if, Leandro. If I, think I don't once... know what to say. I could uh, invite Leandro to come and uh, arrange for a bit of musical uh, inter intermezzos. Yeah, we'll get a concert going, a festival. <laughs> get get Dale to sing. Um, oh, one, guys, one thing I wanted to say for um, cryptos, uh, we I posted this on on the chat room yesterday and on Twitter as well. We are at support. I mean, uh, Leandro showed that we're big support. What worries me is that equities are bouncing, and cryptos are not. 
and we know they have been uh, uh, closely correlated with equities, actually high beta correlation. So if the S&P is up 1%, you expect Bitcoin to be up 2 or 3%. And it hasn't happened. It's actually um, inverted a little bit now, the correlation. So that worries me. If I was long cryptos, I mean, it's a great risk reward level, I think, here, because you know where you're wrong and it's not far below. And if if we do hold support, say, in Bitcoin, we could reach you know 36K relatively quickly. So the risk reward is good. I just think the highest percentage um, move is to go lower. So um, yeah. just one thing I wanted to point out. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you very much for that. Um, no problemo. Right. What I wanted to do today, um, we'll have a quick look at the prices in a second. But what I wanted to do today, just one of the, the questions we got um, from Artem yesterday was asking about take profits. Um, I don't know if Artem's in this morning. Uh, if you are, I'm going to re, uh, retype your question out. Um, but it's something he mentioned yesterday. So I'm going to going to dig into to that a bit today because what I want to do on these shows is not just talk prices, talk where the market's going up and down. I want to address some of the issues you guys have and, and bits and pieces to do with, with trading itself, how I do it, how Kay does it, um, how to avoid the mistakes and, and how to, to deal with the psychological aspect of, of things like taking profit because, you know, there's all different aspects to, to trading. Um, but we'll have, a, we'll have a very quick look at uh, some of the prices. Um, now, dollar yen, I've, I've turned a bit more bearish over uh, right now, after, particularly after uh, Corroda yesterday and starting to see some of the US data. Um, I did have a little break attempt uh, of this, this area here uh, with, with limited success. Uh, but I entered in yesterday at, on, the, on the fix, pretty much just before the fix, when we saw it rise to 127.40. I'm going to start building a bit of a short position now. Um, so I'm in at 127.40 at the moment. Um, and I'm going to be, I'm happy to, to sell it all the way up to these highs here and, and take it from there. Um, not going to go huge at the moment, just going to add little bits and pieces if we do see decent rallies. Uh, and it's going to be something I'm, I'm happy to sit on for a, for the next few months and, and see where we go for there. See if we get the Bank of Japan really changing course or if indeed we start seeing the, the US data turning south uh, more significantly. Um, but in the meanwhile, we, we, we can't get away from this, this 127 area. We're up and down, we're up and down. Um, a little bit of consolidation going on. The, the lows are coming in higher, you know, albeit by just, uh, you know, 10, 15 pips. Um, but the same with the, the highs as well. We're edging it down. Um, so just looking at the, the short term trend, it is slowly grinding lower. Um, but we need to look out for, for what we're going to do around this 127 level. Um, I thought we were getting the break, a proper break of it um, the other day, but we bounced and now it's it's just flip-flopping around the level. Um, so, yeah, at the moment, I'm, I'm just feeling a little bit more bearish uh, dollar yen in here. Kay, you got any uh, thoughts you want to share on that one? Um, no, mate. I, I mean, we are, um, we're hanging around there. I'm tempted to wait for for the end of month, but I'm a lot less bullish than I was uh, than I was before. Uh, obviously, um, I, yeah. I, for the rest, nothing nothing to say right here and now. I'll, I'll probably try and if I trade to to really trade ranges. Uh, it seems like we are we are starting to form a, a, a down a downside or, or downward sloping uh, uh, channel or, or wedge there as well. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's um, interesting days ahead, uh, but for the time being, I'm more in a range feeling than anything else. Yeah, cool. Um, now, uh, we'll have a quick look at, at Euro dollar. Um, did you want to try and share your chart, mate? Because uh, Kay is going to be running the show next week while I'm off. Um, so we just want to make sure that everything's working there. Do you want to have a, a crack at sharing a, a chart? You can pick any pair you want. Uh, uh, um, could you do the euro dollar and I, I can then quickly uh, do the test over the metals. Um, I've, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's not that I really prepared them, but my charts are a little bit uh, clearer on, on there. Yeah, no problem. Euro dollar no problem. is a bit of a spaghetti chart uh, on, the, on my side. <laughs> oh, yeah, give me, give me the easy one, why don't you then? <laughs> um, so we've had, now what I've, I've noticed the last two nights, um, and it's it, potentially has something to do with, with month end is that we've seen a couple of spikes up in, in these pairs, uh, particularly a, a spike down in the dollar in, in the Asia session. Um, we saw it yesterday 
with Cable breaking 126, uh, cracking the egg up there. Um, and the same with the uh, euro dollar today. We've had this this break above the, the recent highs around that 50 area. Um, it's just pulling shy, coming up shy of, of the Fib and, and the next resistance band that I'm looking at, uh, this 38.2 Fib at 107.87. Um, but it's just showing that we, we've got a bit of action in Asia. Um, you know, again, there's cable, uh, you know, shooting right up. Um, and we had this move again uh, yesterday, you know, middle of the night for us over here. But in Asia, that was the break of, of 126, couldn't hold. We've had another shove up here, a bit bigger. Um, again, it hasn't held. So that tends to, to smell like some end of month stuff going on. Um, maybe something just to keep an eye on maybe Sunday over Monday at the open, um, yeah. because obviously we're not completely at month end yet. Um, yeah. Ryan, and, yeah. if I may, I do have an interesting one on the cable, so I can start share, sharing the screen, then I'll, I'll quickly pop over to, um, to, the, to the metals and then uh, you, you'll get it back, all right? Shall I do that? Yeah, go ahead, mate, all yours. Okay, share, here we go. Do you see my screen? Uh, yeah, cool. You've been, you've been looking you at cars again. The, do you see the cable? <laughs> yes, mate. Okay. Um, so this one uh, here, we had this uh, downward sloping uh, uh, channel building from the 140s highs. And today, early in the morning, during the night, we, we ran up to, to it just shy of it. So this is around 126.80. And uh, I think this is going to be an important level. It's also a prior spike low from September 2020. And the 126.80 to me is pretty important in cable. So that's for the sterling. Now, moving over to the, um, to the metals. I was looking at this kind of channel. It has broken, came back into it, and since then we are trying to, to, to get back below, but holding the 1840s. This whole zone is packed. You have a trend line, you have a 200-day moving average, you've got FIPS all over the place. This is the 1828-1840 uh, zone. I think we have like 12 bucks in there uh, to kind of try to decide what's happening if ever we are going uh, to test if it goes back below 1828 i think uh, gold has uh, ran its course if not i think we are um we're in for the 70 75 80 test if if that goes 1900 obviously but we are trying to get back into the um the channel that we had here that for gold and then silver is finally Making an attempt to 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 break above this level. Uh, this this is 22. Let's call it figure figure 12. Uh, also been uh, levels before several times, and now we are making an attempt to uh, to get higher. So um, keep an eye on this 22 figure 12. If we hold it, uh, 22 three quarters. 23 bucks is uh, is very, very possible. I'm still long-term long, very small. I'm sometimes doing a bit of uh, jobbing, scalping, as retail traders call it, um, in, uh, in intraday, but nothing really to say that I'm opening or adding to my, uh, to my position. I think, as Stelios was already mentioning a good number of times, that it is possible that if we get a, a, a bad numbers, bad economic data uh, out of the out of the U.S. and and, and global data or China uh, misses the reopening, whatever, it could be that we it could still be that we re revisit uh, the 19 bucks. But okay, if everything would go relatively smoothly, this one has potential, and uh, that's what. What I wanted to share with you, I stop sharing and give it back to you, Ryan. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, Chris, just grab that back. Okay, so if um, you got any questions on any other uh, pairs you want us to look at, then uh, just drop me in the comments and, and we'll look at that uh, towards the end of the show. But I want to I want to get into Artem's question on on taking profit. Um, if I recall uh, from yesterday, he was he was saying that he has a 
he's okay with entries and, and stops and things, but the, the taking profit aspect is a is a bit of a task. Um, the the biggest thing I see with a lot of retail traders when it comes to things like taking profit is, is twofold. One um, is getting a bit overexcited about profit levels. Um, you know, I'm getting in here. I've got a 50 pip stop. I'm going to take profit in 200 pips time. Um, <clears throat> the second thing, and this is probably the biggest thing for a lot of retail traders regarding taking profit, is the fear factor. Um, a lot of people get in, they have a plan, but as soon as they get into profit, the fear kicks in, and it's it, and traders get scared that they're going to lose the profit that they've got, um, and in some cases, the the plan can go out the window. Um, so it's a, it's a big psychological aspect. Um, now, there's nothing, there's never anything wrong with taking profit. Let me make that clear, okay? If you put money in the bank, that's that's what we're here to do. The problem is, is that if you trade, let's say you trade, um, you get in a trade, you, you, you've you got a profit target of 40 pips um, and you've got a stop of, of 20 pips or something. If you're, if you're getting, if you're sitting in your trade when it loses and, and hitting your stops at minus 20, but you're having a, a 40 pip profit target, but you find you're taking pips after, you know, 10 pips, 15 pips, because that fear factor is kicking in. You look at your ratio of, of how much you're making to how much you're losing, and you're going to be down because you're not letting your, your, your profit targets get hit or you're letting the fear shake you out of a trade too early. So there's several ways you can you can look at it. Now, we had uh, Brian um, yesterday. We were talking about euro dollar. Uh, he was in at 106.85 looking for 107.37, I think it was. Um, yeah, he had his plan. He had his entry. He had his take profit level. Um, and doing that is absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. It, it teaches you, it gets rid of the fear, it teaches you your discipline. You know, you've, that's where you're going to take profit. Um, from my point of view, uh, and I'll let Kay come in in, in a bit and, and give his. From my point of view, when I look at a trade, the take profit is the last thing I look at. I am not interested in taking in, in my take profit level, picking a level. Um, all I'm interested in when I'm very first start a trade, whether it's from the idea stage or when I'm executing a trade, is my risk. That is my sole concern. I want to get in a trade and get my risk down as quick as possible to zero or less of a stop, uh, less of a loss and into profit if possible. That is my number one aim. I do not care about the profit. Now, on the other side, to, to get my risk to zero, that may involve taking profit. Um, so, for example, you know, I trade long term and I can trade shorter term. If I'm trading shorter term, then what I tend to do, you know, if I'm if I'm just trading small levels, um, you know, let's look for an example here. We had some of the smaller levels here. Let's say I'm buying off this this 106.60 level. OK, it's a short term trade. I maybe have a stop just below this level down below. So maybe, you know, 30, 35, maybe 40 pips risk. If I get above the next area, I'm taking profit, be it on a quarter, a half, a fifth, whatever. I put some money in the bank. I'm getting my risk down. That's my first thing I want to do. And then perhaps, you know, let's say, for example, uh, I take half the trade off. Uh, we get up to 106.90. I take half the trade off, maybe 25 pips, 30 pips. First thing I'm going to do is bring my stop up. Now, I may only bring it up 10 pips, 15 pips, 5 pips. All I want to do is get my risk down. So I could take my, my stop up to maybe five pips under my entry. So then I'm, I'm up 25, 30 pips on half the trade. My risk is now five pips on the other trade, on the other half. So whatever happens, I'm now in profit. Okay, my risk is down. I'm in profit. That's that's where I'm at. Psycho psychological wise, I've got no fear now. My trade is free. I can't lose money on it. So what then I want to do is say, right, well, where can the trade go from here? You know, where are the next levels that, that are going to get in my way? Um, is the next level in my way up here at this previous high? It's 107, 40, 50. And so if the trade moves up there, I can then make a decision. Right, what do I want to do here? Okay, we, we've hit that area. 
you know, we're finding a bit of resistance again into this area in these these 15 minute bars. Right. Maybe I'll take a little bit more of the trade. Maybe I'll bring then bring my stop up. So as I take a bit more profit, I bring my stop up a bit more behind it. And then perhaps we get a break. Brilliant. We're off to the races. So what I'm going to do I'm, that might not necessarily take more profit up here because what I'm really looking at is my next levels up here. But we've made the break above here, so maybe I'll bring my stop up a bit more. Maybe I'll stick it just below this line here. Maybe I'll stick it just below the, the big figure at 107. Now, hypothetically, in this trade, you know, we've come off the highs. I didn't take anything up here. I've got a greater chance of, of potentially being stopped because now the price is only maybe 10 pips off, off where my raise stop is. But it doesn't matter. If I get stopped out, I'm still stopped out 25, 30 pips above my entry. So, yeah, I may not make as much because I didn't take anything off further up, but the whole trade, I'm going to make money. And, and that's what you've got to do because the pips I'm making on here are now far greater than if I just got straight stopped on the trade. And so it's all about trying to maximize your profits. Now, you can pick a level and say, right, well, I'm going to buy it off this 60 level and my take profit is going to be at 107, 35, 40, a bit like Brian did yesterday. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But also think about what you're going to do with your stop. So if the price goes your way, what are you going to do? But if you're looking maybe longer term trading, uh, you know, you want to trade a wider range or something like that. The mechanics should still be the same, but what you need to do, you can't just go buy in here at, at 106.60 and think, yeah, I'm going to get out at 109, 110. That's, that's pie in the sky rubbish because you can't use a level for your entries and then ignore everything that stands in your way. It's, you know, it's, it's foolish. So you use the technical levels the same way you may use to, to enter to find your support. You use the same technical levels that are in the way you trade. We call them speed humps. And you make decisions at those levels. What am I going to do if we hit this area here? Am I going to take profit or I'm going to sit back and, and let it run in case it breaks? But what are you going to do if you're wrong? If you're long off here and your stop's just under here, are you going to potentially risk not reaching your target and then watch the price all, way, all come all the way down and, and get stopped out? Or do you at least bring your stops up to break even or maybe just for a couple of pips above just so you can say you bank something. So if you don't get to your target area and the price fails and it comes all the way back down, at least at the very least you should be breaking even if not taking a few pips off the, off the table. But it's, it's the psychological aspect, the fear that gets people into a trade. They suddenly start making money. They may have a profit target higher up but, oh, they see a little dip. Oh, I get scared. Uh, you know, I don't want to give up what I've lost. I don't want to give up the margin I've got in the trade. Oh, I, I quickly, I better take profit. And nine times out of ten when you do that, you know the market's going to carry on your way. But also, you know, traders luck. There's times when you, when you do take the profit or you don't take the profit there and it comes down and stops you out. So it's all about getting over the fear. If you want to have a plan and a take profit level, fine. If you want to stick arduously to your, to your profit level, you know, the 38.2 fib or bust, that's fine. But if you get a move up there, bring your stop up. Bring your stop up so if you don't get your target, you at least break even. And you can even make a bit of money because you may say, right, well, I'm going to bring my stop up and just leave it just below the next level that we've broken say this 106.90 area. So you now your profit, your minimum profit is 25, 30 pips. Even if you're wrong and you don't hit your target, you're making money. You're not losing money. But it's all about the start. Get your risk to zero first and foremost. Worry about the profit after that. So, Kay, you got any, uh, anything you want to add to that one? Yeah, sure. Just a couple of minutes. Um... Yeah, as Ryan was saying, the, the the first and foremost thing is to to manage your your risk. Um, as I've been saying for years and years, um, you never blow up your account on one trade. Never ever do it. Uh, you always need to have 
the to, to give yourself the opportunity to do the next trade because opportunities in the markets are legion they, they they're everywhere whether you're a short-term trader a long-term trader um whether we trade ranges or, or or trends there's always 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 opportunities around the corner so now i would i would like to say for <clears throat> For the tr from the trader's perspective, we need to make a, 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 a bit of a difference, and Ryan already uh, uh, touched upon that without probably uh, giving the giving the child a name. Is whether we trade trends or or uh, or whether uh, we trade ranges. You, you have to know that the market is 80% of the time in ranges. That that is just uh, uh, how it's how it's been over over the years. Even if you look at uh, at the euro dollar one hour that uh, that Ryan is uh, showing there. You go back to uh, no, you, you just stay there. You go back to the first half of the picture. You're you're in a range, and then you 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 break out a little bit. You come back. You're still again in the range. You break out a little bit, and then you can start to form a new range. The the, the directional moves are relatively short compared to range uh, ranges. Let, let's put it that way. They can be violent, but stuff. Now, as far as the take profits are con are concerned, I'm. Exactly as I said, I'm, I'm sometimes, well, I'm a bit of both. I do very short term uh, jobbing, scalping, and I'm doing longer term trades. And the approach is a, is a little bit different. Where the approach is not different is the preparation of the trade to know your risk. As Ryan also said, I mean, every trader who has been in the markets for longer than, uh, than, than a few months knows that the first that part of the big part of a preparation of a trade is to know your risk. Where am I wrong? So that's the first thing. Once you've got that in your uh, in your arsenal of, of what tools to use, then you can of course look at your profits. And there comes the 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 in 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 my case uh, there it comes into into play. What am I looking for? Am I am, do I think that something is changing in the market? We can create a trend or do I think okay, we, we're still in this range. Nothing is nothing is uh, changing. So then I'm I'm going to start trade that range, and and my take profits depend on it. But Ryan and I, having been so long in the market, and we haven't we didn't know each other until four or five years ago. But we but since we've been long long in the market, we realize that we use our stops and take profits in the same way, and. Uh, dare I say that is the secret for to be in this market for a long for for a long time. Never lose your account. Always be be ready to to take the next opportunity, um, and and manage manage your risk, but also manage your take profit. So if I think I'm in a range, I'm going to go in Ryan's second scenario and go and and take a profit a little bit uh, sooner. The good thing about being a trader and an FX trader is that you can re-enter trades even if you even if you have taken full profit because you think you're in a range if the range breaks you can do a break trade and you can be back into the same uh into the same uh, side of the market um or if if uh, if the range is confirmed and you have taken your profits or your trading stop is done for instance because i also use trading stops um then then you can rethink and uh, and redo it so I might have a few, a little bit more dynamic take profits than Ryan when I'm when I'm in because I found out that I'm a bit shorter term most of the time than 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 Ryan. Um, but the so I'm I, I tend to take profits uh, uh, perhaps a bit sooner when I think uh, we're in a range. But in a long term trade, it's all about uh, managing the risk. Where are you wrong? Um, like for instance, dollar yen. Uh, Ryan was was in it much uh, earlier than I was, but we we both uh, have have ran the dollar yen uh, the dollar yen higher. Ryan is was in since one hundred five and 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 below. I was in since uh, since just below one hundred and ten, and we 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 ran it up at 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 various uh, various speeds and 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 various levels. But we virtually between the two of us took the whole uh, the whole move higher and and. And then you tend to take less quickly profit because we look at the big picture and we say like, has anything changed? So we we basically traded central bank divergence and uh, it, it worked like a dream. So we were in the long-term trade, that's great. But if I think I'm in, uh, I'm in ranges, my risk 
profile is going to be tighter. So my stops are going to be tighter um, than, than when I'm in a, a long-term trade. And the take profits, ditto. Uh, when, I, when I'm in a range trade, my take profits will be a bit uh, sooner than, uh, when, uh, than when I'm in a longer-term trade. So that's basic. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and it's all about context. You know, what are you trading? If you're, if you're scalping, uh, you know, you, you're looking at faster profits. You're not looking at 100 pip moves. You're looking at grabbing the 10, 20, 30 pip moves. If I'm trading long term, um, I'm looking for the, the 100, 500 pip moves. Um, but the, the, pro, the, the point of all this is the process should be the same. The mechanics of, of finding a trade, entering a trade, executing a trade, managing a trade should be the same. And I know when, when I'm speaking to a decent trader because they do exactly that. That part of trading is boring. It should be automatic as breathing. Entry, stop, risk, manage. You just look at it that way, it's boring. It's the same thing every single trade. But that's where you need to get to. Because if you, if you understand your risk, if you accept, I do that trade, I'm going to lose X amount, and you accept that, you lose the fear because you, the, the money's gone. And that's the way I approach it. When I put a trade on, when I've got my stop on, that money to me is gone. I've lost it. And I accept that at the worst case, I've lost it. Because if you, if you accept that outcome and you're prepared for outcome, everything else is a bonus. So if you make money, great. But I know if I lose, I'm going to lose that amount. It's done. It's gone. It's out my bank. I don't have to worry about it. If I go offside, I'm not like, oh, what do I do now? What do I do now? It was part of the plan. The part of the plan was to lose, potentially lose some money. And it's dealing with that psychological aspect that then helps you on the other side. Um, so good stuff. Um, I hope yeah, that's giving I, you a little I was just like, yeah. uh, like to add a, a last, uh, last word about that. Is yeah, go that ahead. about managing emotions. Um, a lot of people say, like, take the emotions out of trading. If you take the emotions out of trading, you will never trade or because you're going to be shit scared of, of, of putting on a trade. So yeah. emotions will be there all the time. Uh, you, you can you, you, and you have to allow yourself to be happy when you make money and you and you have to um, not really be sad or afraid or fear to lose money, but your the loss should be monitored and and put in in such way that it takes away fear of trading so and that's where uh, uh managing your risk whether it whether it be half a percent or one percent or uh, if you rather trade in uh, in in moves like uh, amount of pips and uh, and stuff like that you, you always have to to manage that and that takes a lot of fear away. Emotions will always be in trading. I've been trading for 40 years and I I don't even know if I had one day where I didn't get in some way a bit emotional about about some things, whether it be happy or saying like, oh, well, I hit that one wrong. It's an emotion. But if I hit it wrong, it's not going to dampen my enthusiasm to go into next trades. So you have to... Yeah. Accept the emotions, but manage them. And managing the emotions comes best with putting stops. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's you know, I do the same. I, I get shaken out of some trades. I get into a trade, best plans in the world. And I look at it and I think, I don't, I don't like the look of it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. And maybe I get out. Um, but if I get out, I'm going to do that either with a really small loss before my stops hit um, or flat. And if the trade goes my way, well, tough shit, really. But you've got to you've got to control the emotions. And if you find that every time you enter a trade, the first thing that goes through your mind is, oh God, it's offside, or what do I do now? I'm ten pips up. Then you you aren't emotionally aligned, and you need to work on that aspect. Um, and but part of that is accepting what you're doing from the start. Accept your loss from the start. That takes a hell of a lot of emotion out the the rest of the trade, and then you deal with the other side. Um, so, right, let's have a look, at, see if we've got any other questions in there, some some kind words from some of you guys. Um, thank you very much. You know, I want this show to be about aspects like this as well, not just looking at prices and talking about different pairs and, and stuff like that. You know, we have a long way to go. I don't want to give you everything uh, all in one show, otherwise we'll be here for hours. Um, so when we get these little quiet moments and you guys want to ask a question, um, you know, throw it up there, and if we can't 
grab it in one show, we'll note it down and, and do it in another show when, when things are a bit quieter. Um, so I'll let you get back because we've been waffling on for a, for a good period. I can't see any questions uh, in there. That uh, Anything you noted, Kay? Um, about natural, not gas, but uh, first of all, it's a bit out of my comfort zone. Um, I, you, I, I watch it, but I'm not really trading it. But uh, I, I can take a look at that. We I spoke to Nick about it. I can take a look at that on Monday, if you like. Um, just yeah, one definitely. last thing I would like to tell everybody. Um, we are, again, trading uh, value date end of month. End of month flows are in the market. We can see wonky moves. Accept them, don't fear them, and uh, just uh, watch uh, watch that show of the end of month flows going on. Uh, I think until Tuesday, um, there might still be a bit of uh, strange moves uh, coming up, so uh, be careful out there. Yeah, cool. Right, just a couple in there. Uh, Ionat, uh, Marion, um, what's the reason for buying Euro Sterling? Um, this is a trade that I'm playing basically on the, the central bank divergence between the ECB and the Bank of England. Um, it's pretty much a reverse of, of the trade I did on the way down uh, when we were coming out at the end of Brexit. Um, I was short up near the 92s and, and ran that all the way down uh, to the low 83s. Um, I missed getting in on this low here. This was a big area I was looking at um, to start building longs from. Um, missed that. Um, I ended up long from 83, uh, 83, 50 and 84 currently at the moment. I'm looking for another big push up. I want to see it get above this 86 level. But I think that the ECB turning to a, to a hike cycle is going to overweigh or outweigh the Bank of England purely because they're the bigger central bank. Um, and I'm going to be looking for a move, hopefully up, up above 87, and maybe we get it up towards the 90s. But I will take each level as it comes, as, as I was just saying in the explanations. I won't, I won't be thinking about the price getting to 90 if we can't get through 86. So take each level as they come. Um, break trade. If we get a break of 86, I'm potentially looking to add there uh, and see what we do. Uh, Mike, a quick point. Um, do you see Euro dollar drifting up to 107.80? Uh, given big options expiries today. That's what I wanted to go over quickly. We do have some big option expiries um, on the board today. Now, you guys and some of you guys and girls are lucky uh, because this information is really only for Forex Analytics subscribers. Um, but as this show's new, I'm going to give you a little taster uh, over the next few days as, as to what we get there. Um, really, some big expiries here. Um, in euro dollar, you know, a bit lower down at the bulk of the 106.40.50, that should say, excuse my typo, uh, 3.36 million, just below there, 20.30, 2.5 million. There's roughly about 12 billion going off between 106 and just about the high 108, uh, 107s. Um, so 107, 70, 80, only 828 million, or I say only. Um, 50, 60, 1.79 billion, you know, 1 billion at, at 107, even 10. Um, so some decent numbers in there. But unfortunately, what can happen with the options when you get lots happening um, in a big, uh, along the price ladder, you know, from a big range, 106 to 107 or 108, it can also, it can almost have a, a an offsetting effect, a negative effect. You know, if we had one big fat expiry today, um, say at 107.50.60, then I would think, well, maybe we might get some action around it. But when you have decent size all the way up and down the price ladder, you've got to think, well, which one are uh, traders potentially going to hedge? Which one are they going to mess the price around with? Is it this one? Is it that one? Is it the other one? So it, it can become a bit more muddy. Um, but quickly, I want to point out for next week, we've got some um, big expiries, some real juicy ones. Euro dollar on the 31st, which is obviously month end, there's 8.35 billion going off at 105.90, 106. Now, probably we're well away from that, um, too far away to, for it to, to have any effect. But, you know, we have got a few, day, few days to go until the end of the month. Um, anything can happen. If we do get down there, then, then keep an eye out for those. Um, what does stick out about these, these options, this big expiry in here, is that they are pretty recent trades. So they were all put on from late April. Um, when you look at things like expiries and we get these big, big ones, I look at the trades to see when they were done because a lot of the time, you know, they might be done six months, eight months, a year ago, 
Um, and if when they're put on so far back, they can just tend to look like normal hedges. You know, someone hedged something for, for this May, maybe it was a M&A or maybe it's a profits, uh, whatever, bills to pay, you never know. But if they're really old trades, then for me, it means there's potentially less trading action around them when we get to them. But when you get these big expiries and, and they've been put on pretty recently, that tends to mean there, there can be more hedging around it or we see more price action around it because these option players, it's a short-term strategy. They're playing on something particularly. It's not necessarily a straightforward hedge. Um, so it, it can mean that we will see some action around there if we're down at those levels. Cable okay, has a couple as well, a um, bit closer to home, 126.40, just under 2 billion. Um, and then we've got nearly 4 billion at 125, 40, 50. Again, these are fairly short term, so we might see something around those options, ones to keep an eye on on, on month end. Uh, so that's it for this week. Uh, thank you very much for coming to the Flow Show. I hope uh, we've given you some good insight here. Um, as mentioned, I will be off next week, so I will leave it in Kay's very capable hands. Um, I will see you in a week's time. Have a great weekend. Have a great rest of the day. Uh, many pips to you all. And uh, we will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend, all. Cheers, mate. See ya. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.